Right. right. When I was a young fella, my poetry was hard won. I was dyslexic. I uh, couldn't read. Everything was oral anyway. It was my dad. My dad was the best book I ever had. My sister's voice, her breath on my cheek. That's what text was written with. Some poems I had to wait 40 years to actually see them in print and not be my dead sister's breath on my cheek. That's how I have to wait for some poems. Other poems were very hard one. As I was saying to this lovely lady here, as we both like Jared Manley Hopkins, um, my Hopkins came hard to me. I was a young fella, I'd started in secondary school and the obligatory rites of starting secondary school was to, all the big boys would get you and put your head down the loo and flush it. And somehow I had escaped this fate and it had escaped their minds that I had escaped this fate and then they just looked at me and thought, Dempsey, we haven't done Dempsey. So I was reading and I was the Lord case, I didn't do the higher case poetry, but I used to read the higher case poetry. So I was reading Hopkins, and I was reading the wind of her, and they caught me. And they said, what you reading, kid? Oh, Hopkins. And they tore the pages out of the book. It was a school book. Ah, agony. And then, I was like a weak little feeble kid, not the fat fucking you see now. So they, they actually got me, and this is stupid, it's so like a cartoon, they got me by the scruff of my neck, and they hung me up in the coat hangers in the coat hall. And I'm there like some demented puppet like that. And they feed me Hopkins, and they roll the Hopkins, the wind hover, into a ball, and they put it into my mouth. And I've got my mouth full of Hopkins. What they don't know is that I love the Hopkins, and not only have I physically got my mouth full of Hopkins, but I know the damn thing. <laughs> so, I spit the, uh, the bullets of paper and mud and words out of my mouth, and I go, I caught this morning, morning's minion, kingdom of daylight's dolphin, dapple drawn falcon, on the roaming level of the... And they go, oh, oh, stay quiet, stay quiet. And the, the headmaster was going to come out any minute. And I was able to use Hopkins to stop these bullies in mid-flight. And that is how I came to own Jared Nelly Hopkins. <laughs> so, there is power in poetry. The other poem I always remember is Tom Hood's <laughs> I Remember, I Remember. Uh, and my dad came in from the cloth he had. And he had all new potatoes. And he was holding them against his chest like that. And he wiped his sweaty forehead. There was a streak of earth going across him here, down here, like an Indian. And uh, he said to me, he said, he was tired, poor man. And he said, oh, don't he, son? And I said, yeah, Dad. And he said, I remember, I remember. And I said, do you, Dad? And he said, yes, the house where I was born. Really? The little window where the sun came peeping in at morn. No, it never came. <laughs> Winter sooner brought you long a day. And now I often wish to let it pour my breath away. And I could do that because I thought it was my dad talking. I didn't realise it was Thomas Hood, didn't realise it was a poem. And that's how when you're dyslexic, the words just come into you like that and you love them for what they are. Hello! Now that's the dog can do good poetry. That was, that was, I remember, I remember in the canine tongue. So, I went to school. And those were the days of learning by rote. And I, the teacher said, oh, you just turn to Said, open your book, and today we're going to do a new poem, and whoever learns it all first can have the rest of the day off. I opened the book, it was Thomas Fitz, I remember, I remember. So I said, I remember, I remember the house where I was born. A little bit, and I was out of there. That was the first good thing that poetry ever did for me. <laughs> now, uh, I did ask you to bring a poem. If you have brought a poem, that's lovely. Gareth, what poem have you brought? Um, Don't say the rhyme of the ancient mariner or the wasteland, please. No, <laughs> nah, it's Martin Newell. All right, Martin Newell, that's good. And it journey to the bottom of your handbag. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> right, one of my favourite authors is uh, Louis McNeese. And whether I can get through all the bagpipe music Yay. is unknown to me. <laughs> but I am foolishly going to try this. So, it is the 1930s, uh, folk Scotland, the Western Isles of Scotland is getting overwhelmed by the new urban culture. It's not going to be that folk culture anymore. For Formica tabletops are going to replace good solid wooden oak 
Uh, plastic is going to be the new world. Uh, the world is getting ready for a world war that it doesn't realise it's going to happen, but it's there in the air. Uh, he'll do his autumn journal and that will chronicle that greatly altogether. And uh, it'll be just the usual tale of not to do. On the parish means on the dole. Um, all the things that we try to occupy ourselves with sex, movies, blah, 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 um, spiritualism, uh, yoga, all that. We're going to throw all that at it, but it's going to be no good because we're going to lose our essential selves. So this is what bagpipe music is all about. <coughs> if I break down and can't remember the next line, you can all just cheer at me and go, <laughs> Right, bagpipe music. It's no go the merry-go-round, it's no go the rickshaw. All we want is a limousine and a ticket for the peep show. The knickers are made of crypt sheen, their shoes are made of python. Their holes are lined with tiger rugs and their walls with heads of bison. John MacDonald found a corpse, put it under the table, waited till it came to life and hit it with a poker. Sold its, blood, its eyes for souvenirs, sold its blood for whiskey. Kept its bones for dumbbells to use when he was 50. <laughs> it's no go the yogi man, it's no go Blavatsky. All we want is a bank balance and a bit of skirt in the taxi. Annie McDougall went to milk, cut her foot in the head of woof. Walked to hear the dance record, playing of old Vienna. It's no go your maiden heads, it's no go your culture. All we want is a Dunlop tire and the devil men the puncture. The lad the felt spent hug with me, declaring he was sober. Counted his feet to prove the fact that found he had one foot over. Mrs. Carmichael had her fifth, looked at the jug with repulsion, said to the midwife, take it away, I'm through with overproduction. It's no go, the gossip column is no go, the Kaylee. All we want is a mother's help and a sugar stick for the baby. Willie Murray cut his tongue, couldn't count the damage, took the hide of an Ayrshire cow and used it for a bandage. His brother caught 300 cran when the seas were lavish. Threw the bleeders back in the sea and went upon the parish. It's no go the herring board, it's no go the Bible. All we want is a packet of fags when our hands are idle. It's no go <laughs> the picture palace. It's no go the stadium. It's no go the country carpet pack of pink geraniums. It's no go the government grants, it's no go the elections. Sit in your arse for 50 years and hang your hat in the pension. Oh, it's no go, my honey love. It's no go, my puppet. Work your hands from day to day. The winds will blow the profit. The glass is falling hour by hour. The glass will fall forever. But if you break the bloody glass, you won't hold it the weather. <laughs>